today is the Motorola Atrix. Uh, it is the most powerful, the world's most powerful smartphone. We say that for several reasons. First of all, it's the first time a dual core processor has been put into a smartphone. This allows to, you to maximize the power and speed as well as minimize the battery consumption that you have. Secondly, it's fast because it runs on uh, the HSPA Plus network, some of the AT&T's 4G HSPA Plus network, so lightning fast download speeds. And then third, we increase the RAM of this solution so that similar to your PC, if you upgrade the RAM, you'll get much faster performance, especially as you get higher throughput as well as higher processing power. You can see that it's actually quite responsive. The um, other elements of it are that it's big on resolution. So it not only has the world's first QHD display, HD standing for high definition, but it's also got a high definition camera. It's got one camera on the front, which is a VGA camera, and then a high definition camera on the back, which allows me not only to record high definition video, but can play it back on a very bright and sharp high resolution display, displaying a 24 bit color depth, which is bigger than what you would normally find today. 960 by 540. So, yeah, it's 35% 35, 35 more pixels than you'd find on something like an AMO LED screen today. And it's also got a 20% larger viewable area than you'd find on a three and a half inch screen. So it's bigger and higher resolution than a lot of the phones out there today. The other thing is that it goes up to 48 gigabytes of internal storage. It comes with 16 gig on board and then you can put in a 32 gig card to actually have 48 gigabytes of storage. So between the speed, which is supported by the dual core processor, the HSPA Plus network support, and the gig of RAM, between the resolution, which is the first QHD resolution device, and the HD camera on the back, as well as the memory and motor blur, this is the world's most powerful device. It also has a secure security mechanism, which is a fingerprint sensor on the back, so you no longer need to type in any pin codes to actually have your device secure. You can actually just swipe it and get right in and make the phone call as quickly as possible. But the way that this actually revolutionizes mobile computing and convergence is when you actually dock this into a solution. So I would be able to, on the train ride, going to my office, take this laptop dock, which measures in at under 14 millimeters thick. It actually also has a huge battery battery and it's charging the phone at the same time and it's thinner than most people's smartphones. I can flip up this in the back, I can take my phone and dock it there and it will instantly, well instantly, it will in less than five seconds boot up into a full computing environment. Now you'll see two things here. One on the right, you'll see that I actually have all of my web computing window or all of my web computing windows or browser. It supports Firefox 3.6.13 as well as Adobe Flash 10. So you'll see more of the web faster. And secondly, on the left hand side, you'll see the mobile view, which is actually my Android phone. Now all of this again is being powered just by the phone. There's no intelligence, no processor, nothing in this laptop other than the battery, the screen, the keyboard, and the mouse. Down here, there's a set of predetermined apps, and then you can add other shortcuts, similar to other computers that you might find. So I can put a bunch of bookmarks down here, other applications. So those are installed on the phone itself. Those are Correct. And you can put additional ones in here, like I put a couple other others down here as well. But um, it allows you to have a full computing environment, not just with your Windows and your online computer, but also with your smartphone. So I can be text messaging using the full device. I can be watching the game on this side. I can be doing my email. I can be Twittering, or I can be checking and sending text messages over here, all using a full keyboard and mouse. When a phone call comes in, there will be a little window that pops up over here. It says phone call coming in from John Smith. I can click answer or ignore. And if I answer it, the actual audio array has been designed so you can have this on speakerphone and still be used clearly. Or we anticipate many people will just use the Bluetooth so, uh, so this is what you're able to do. You know, it's nice because you can also tab between multiple windows just like this and get to your applications very quickly. It um, allows you to have, you know, your calendar in one, your email in the other, and also, you know, any type of windows. You can launch numbers and numbers and numbers of windows right there. And all this is powered from the phone itself, the Atrix itself? This is all powered from the Atrix, and that's what is completely about. But again, the beauty is, the battery is so big on this, that with the Atrix and 48 gig of memory and get a PC grid RAM, you can watch two movies on your way from New York to LA, take it out and you still have a fully charged phone because this is actually charged.
The other nice thing about this is that not only does it allow for a full computing environment, but if I close this and take the device out, you'll notice that I have you know the same type of window that I was looking at. Unfortunately, it was a white screen. But um, I can take this now, and if I go home and want to actually or go into a hotel room and want to watch a movie or Johnny's Big Goal or the video that I actually uh, videoed of the sunset the other night, I can go into the Motorola Entertainment Center. And this is a place to look and consume all of your music, pictures, and video with a dock and this wireless remote. So I can take this wireless remote and point it at the dock from my couch and go left and right to my pictures, my videos. I can go back into the web top environment. And here, if I were to go into uh, one of the videos that I have, you can see that the resolution is, is quite impressive. Uh, yeah. It's, it allows you not only to be productive professionally, but also relax personally. Yes. So any of the information, any pictures you took on the device, any video that you took on the device, and you could even um, you know, use your uh, display at home to go back into your computing environment. Should you have forgotten your laptop, and you um, don't have your keyboard or mouse, or you don't have your, um, your monitor, you can actually go in to using your home monitor and go into webtop, and you'll notice that it boots up exactly into the environment that I was using before. So here you see the same windows, you see the same Android environment, and you can even go, you know, you can get the wireless keyboard and mouse, so a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse will work with this, and you can work from your couch using that. But you can also go in and use this as a mouse pad to limp along. And you can left and right click. So I could go in and I could um, you know, click on any of these links. I could view top news stories. Um, I just click on that. And then um, you know, it allows me to be as productive at home as I am in the office. Can you elaborate on the UHD and all that? Sure. What do you have? So QHD stands for a quarter high definition. The resolution is 960 by 540, which is you know, yeah, 35% more pixels than you find on something like an AMOLED screen today, and then 20% larger than any of the other So you're the only ones that have. We're the only ones that have the QHD display. The first launch of that on the screen. Yeah. The video camera on the Atrix, does it capture video in 720p or 1080p? It's a 720p, 20, 720p video capture. And can I load 1080p onto the device and play it at full yes, 1080p? Yes, if you had 1080p, 1080p videos, you could view it there as well. Through the media dock. Right, but it would come out of 720p. Okay. Exactly, or the QHD resolution. Okay. Can I take a picture back?